Incredibles 2. Did you see it? I did see it. What was uh, your overall impression of Incredibles 2? Uh, I liked it. Yeah? I, uh, yeah. I was kind of bored, but my kids really liked it. I, we went and saw it. Uh, it was like an eight o'clock showing, which is their bedtime. But, yeah. uh, so that was a little rough having them stay up, you know, three what hours past their bedtime. Made. <laughs> yeah. We won't do it again for a long time, but they were all, you know, like on the edge of their seats and like really invested in Dakota, my two-year-old was like, oh no, oh no, like a bunch of times. And then would they clapped when the heroes won. And so I was like, yeah. you know, this movie did exactly what it meant to do. It was made for kids. It's not made to, it wasn't made for me, right? Like I, right. I was not the audience they were trying to please. They were trying to make a uh-huh. movie for kids that the parents don't hate why they watch it. And that's exactly what this movie was. Yeah, um, so we took our three kids. Man, that was an adventure. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> probably won't do it again for a while. Why is that? But it wasn't, it wasn't all bad. They just they get distracted. So they get bored. You know, they don't want to sit in a seat for two hours. Um, so my oldest liked it. And then, I mean, the other, you know, the twins, they, they got into it here and there, and they would watch, but you could tell they were kind of bored ish yeah um but i mean they they generally liked it uh mason the whole time he i guess he couldn't really figure out if he was watching a new movie or the original (laughs) incredibles because they watch it a lot at home yeah so probably 10 different times throughout the whole movie and it it seemed to always be at a quiet moment he just really loudly like is this the same one (laughs) is this the same one did they? He, he couldn't comprehend that he was seeing like new material. Yeah, yeah. Did they like it? I think so. Um, there, there was, there was a part where it kind of made the audience laugh too, because it was towards the end, and I don't, I don't know if what I, don't, I can't even remember exactly what moment it was. Towards the end, something happened, and it was like a heroic moment, and then it got quiet, and then Jack just goes. Wow! Really loud. <laughs> Got some some snickerings and some some laughs. Yeah, I. Uh, it was pretty funny. I thought the beginning was pretty interesting, the way because at the end of the original, the underminer shows up, and mm-hmm. he kind of seems like a joke villain, right? It seems like oh, this is going to be no problem for them to take care of, and then yeah. the second movie starts. And he was really complicated for them. Like, yeah. And uh, I thought the, I really enjoyed that beginning action. I, I liked um, Elastigirl's uh, train chase scene. I thought that was yep. super creative. All the stuff they did with her powers and the different ways she got around and all that. I thought that was really creative. But I, I enjoyed the first one way more. I like their. Oh, really? Yeah, I like the jumping back and forth from the different characters, doing different things, and utilizing all the powers together more cohesively than just her own scene. Do you know what I mean? I kind of yeah. hoped for a lot more of the family uh, working I'm sure together. We'll, we'll get more of that. I, I, I'm sure they'll do more. You think they'll make um, another one? Oh, yeah. Everything is, is trilogies these days. Everything. Is, yeah. This movie could have bombed, and they would still do another one. Ah, uh, maybe um, I don't know. I mean, it oh, took I'm positive. Well, it took 15 years for this one to come out. That's just because they have so many projects going, and and back then they kind of weren't doing all the sequels yet. Like, I think at that point, the only sequel that had come out was Toy Story Two. Uh, maybe Cars uh, Two. I could, I possibly. Could, no, because I don't even think Cars 1 was out yet. Because this was, I want to say, 2004. Mm-hmm. And I think Cars Cars came out in either 2005 or six. I think Finding Nemo came out in like 2003. 
So we I, they weren't really. I mean, Toy Story Two was their first ever Pixar sequel. Yeah, they just weren't really do. They were just doing all new original stuff. So I don't think it's lack of a good story or uh, you know box office success. I think they just had other stuff that they were working on. Yeah, I don't know. I who knows, <laughs> but uh, I think at this point we will definitely see a third one. Um, we've gotten three cars. Uh, we're getting a fourth Toy Story. Uh, we've gotten a second Monsters Inc. We've gotten a second Finding Nemo. And with I'm sure more to come. So yeah. it, there's going to be I, I I can almost guarantee it. Yeah. Well, what did you? Plus, it's doing well, so yeah. there's no reason not to. What did you think about the story in this one? I liked it. I think I liked this one better than the first one. I yeah. I, I, I really liked the first one. Uh, but I, I, I liked, I liked her being the, the main person yeah. and, and, uh, Mr. Incredible having to be the, the stay at home guy and f- kind of take the back seat to yeah. it. Cause his, his, you know, his, his, uh, ability is obviously it's super strength, right? So his kind of answer to everything is just using like force mm. and then getting to see hers. Obviously she doesn't have that. So she has to find different ways and. Is more you know creative. Uh, I, I liked it. I thought it was good. Yeah. Um. It wasn't all too like. Uh, it, it was pretty predictable. Yeah. I think. <clears throat> I was actually. I was. I was surprised that the the brother guy wasn't in on it. Mm, yeah. That yeah. was really the only thing that I was surprised about. It was very clear that she was the bad guy when she walked in and threw all her bags on their butler. And like dumped all her stuff, and you're like, oh, okay, this is not a good person. Yeah. And uh, the motivation between having their parents die, I was like, okay, well, they're clearly up to something. Like, but again, it's it's not it, it's not meant to trick us. You know what I mean? It's meant for kids who aren't gonna consider that, who haven't seen all this stuff. And yeah, do you? <laughs> Do you think she she was, I don't want to say fair or right, like uh, justified in her hatred of superheroes? So she was mad that her dad didn't do something practical to protect her mom because he trusted superheroes, right? Right. And that they didn't help because they were, they were outlawed at that point. Yeah. But that wasn't, so, she wasn't mad about the outlaw part. No. He, her yeah, brother no, was that, upset about the outlaw that part. They, they had a safe room and he didn't, or a panic room and he didn't use it. Yeah. But why not both? Why not call the superheroes and then get to your panic room? Or yeah. why not have your superhero phones in your panic room? Well, I kind of thought that the superheroes might have done it. I thought that was. The break in? Yeah. I thought that was what they're setting up. It just, it's not. That's not what, what happened. What's the motivation? What, what would their motivation be? Um, I think because he was getting rich off of them, right? What was his occupation? I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I don't remember. So how? Uh, I yeah. But he was like showing them off, and he had like direct lines to all them, and all this different stuff. And I, I thought in the silhouettes of when the the villain or the the murderers walk in, I thought I was like, oh, maybe that's superheroes. But that was just. Sorry, that, that was just a random thought I had at the movie. <laughs> it doesn't really mean anything now. That would have been interesting. Yeah. Uh, it may be too dark for a kid's movie, but, you know. Um, yeah, true. But, yeah, so, no, it was clear that she was the villain. I, I agree. I thought the brother was going to be in on it, but I kind of liked that he wasn't. Um, but his whole... Oh, uh, sp- yeah. His whole intention, his whole mission was to change the perception of superheroes to the public and that way, because they only ever get to see the aftermath of what happens when a superhero fights a villain and yeah. the camera crew show up and they show all the bad stuff that happened. His idea was, let's film you being heroic so they understand why all the bad stuff happens, which I thought was a really yeah. cool idea for a superhero story because that comes up a lot, right? You have it in um, Batman vs. Superman. It's definitely... Is yeah, a definitely in Avengers too. Yeah, in Avengers too. It's a it's a theme that goes across where superheroes are destroying things, and the public has no idea what's happening. 
you as a viewer watching the movie, you get it because you they're showing you everything. They're showing you the bad guys. They're building everything up. Everything has kind of a logical step that you're you're yeah. able to track. But imagine just being in one of those buildings that gets torn apart. You would have no idea, right. no expectation anything was coming. You would think, yeah, these are people who maybe shouldn't be allowed to do what they're doing or at least should be regulated more. And so his idea of let's film you being heroic makes a ton of sense. And Oh, it's 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 a good idea. It's brilliant. Um and so that's what he's doing and it works. Every his whole plan succeeds. He's able to change the public opinion, which ends up changing the uh I guess political opinion. And they pass bills to allow superheroes to come back. But the sister wants to make everyone scared of superheroes, which I thought as a motivation was kind of dumb because what is the benefit for her if everyone is afraid of superheroes? Because then they'll get outlawed again for good. But they're already outlawed. Yeah. Like, it, what is her... Yeah, I don't know. Because she helps her brother, which, I mean, maybe she's trying to keep it a secret, right. whatever. But it, it, her motivation of, well, my dad didn't help my mom because he trusted superheroes is fine. But her plan to, let's get everyone to trust them so then we can really show them how bad they are. But she's having to manipulate them to be this bad is weird. Like, they're ultimately a good right they they save people they protect people they keep you know city safe i don't get her desire to build them up to tear them down as a revenge to be um logical enough to really like buy into well it doesn't have to be logical it could be irrational because it's something that happened to her as a child and she never let go she had an irrational hatred of him as a childhood and it just kept growing yeah no i i get it um and it makes more sense when it's not a narrative that's written by someone right like if someone just does that you can chalk that up to oh they're just crazy or they don't understand or they just are being irrational but when you have someone deciding this character is going to do this for this reason there's a lot less room to just be like oh well they're just irrational and they don't really ever show that 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 irrational and rationality they don't yeah they don't point that out in the movie enough for it to make sense of like oh she's doing this because she's she's a bad thinker you know they just like this yeah. is what she's doing get get used to it yeah um hmm. yeah i don't know but the uh the visual effects look great in this you know i mean obviously 15 years uh makes a big difference I like- but they were able to. Yeah, keep, I liked all the action. I thought the action was great. Yeah, they were able to keep the style um, consistent while updating everything they were able to do with it, which was really cool. Yeah. Um. um like you're saying, I liked the all action the, was good. This. Yeah, I liked all the, the the fights with the like the secondary superheroes. Uh, I really liked uh, the character Void. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it's weird that she was Kristen Stewart, right? That wasn't Kristen Stewart. No, but it was like directly modeled after Kristen Stewart. Is it really? I don't know if intentional. I I wonder if she was going to voice her and then they changed it. But like her mannerisms and everything very much seems like Kristen Stewart. You don't think so? You That didn't hmm. stand out to you? No, I didn't even think about that. Hmm. Well, next time you watch it, think about that. It'll make you crazy. I just like, yeah, it probably will. <laughs> the way that she manipulate you know did different things but i liked when she it was when she was fighting uh elastic girl on the boat and she was like using her i don't know portals or whatever to like make her punch herself yeah. and do all these different I, I don't know i thought that was cool well so all of these powers that they use have pretty much been represented in other movies and other superhero things before and they none of them were really like original ideas for powers but yet but- Everything they did was so original in the way they used them. In oh yeah, uh, the the speed, the pace of the powers that they used, like how quick everyone was going and doing things, was really impressive. Uh, especially when you compare it to the other movies that use similar things, like yeah, Fantastic Four. 
Uh, Elastigirl mm-hmm. is way better than Mr. Mr. Fantastic. What's his name? Ugh. Yeah, it's Mr. Fantastic, and it's the stupidest name. <laughs> I always hated. I hate almost all of the names in uh, Fantastic Four. Yeah. But like, Mr. Fantastic is stupid name. Uh, I guess what's uh is it Invisible Girl? What's her name? Um, I feel like it's not even that. Invisible Woman, the Invisible Woman. Like, is it that? Is that what it is? Clear Lady. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember exactly. But I hate the Human Torch. I hate the Thing. I hate Doctor Doom. What a stupid name! But uh, this The Incredibles takes a lot from them and does it yeah. better. I feel like they everything that they do is so interesting. Um, the way they do it is it seems way more thought out than what they do with the uh, the Fantastic Four. Man, keep dropping stuff. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, I definitely like it. Um, I'm very curious to see what they do with the baby. I think he could be a big part of the if they go forward with it because yeah. he can do so many different things. He could be he could be like the ultimate superhero. He's he I, there's like I don't know just so many different things he could well, travel interdimensionally. I was, He's got laser vision. I, he can multiply himself. I was confused about the baby because at the end of the first movie, he uses all his powers to defeat, um, what's the bad guy's name? Jason Lee. Jason Lee. But what's his superhero name? Uh, it was. It's like on the tip of my tongue. Oh yeah. I don't remember. Um, syndrome. Uh, he defeats syndrome. Syndrome, Yeah. The baby defeats syndrome up in the air. Then, but I don't think they see that. So that was what I was gonna say: is they don't they don't make it clear enough if they're aware that the baby has powers or not. The, in this movie, it's very clear that they have no idea. But at the end of the first right. one, it seems like they would know that the baby yeah, burst I, into flames, even though he was so high up. Like, yeah, that part seemed kind of strange to me. Hmm. Like, it definitely, I feel like this movie should have started off with everyone being aware that Jack Jack had powers. It seemed like a weird step for them to be like, oh, he's got powers? That's that's new information that we didn't have before. When the audience well, has it, you know? The, yeah, there's that. The only thing that kind of bothered me is is how, like, surprised they are that he has powers. As if, like, what are the chances that he wouldn't have powers? Like... You have three kids, two of which have powers. The third one, probably going to have powers. Yeah. Like, why is it like, whoa? Like, it, it would have been more like if they were like, wow, like, we we don't think that he has powers. And, like, it's a, it's a thing that, like, he never uses his powers, like, in front of him. So they think he might actually not have powers and then come to find out he does. Well, I th- not like, I don't know. It, I think the, that was the only thing. I think the thing was that he was very young to have his powers available to him that everyone else took longer Uh, that they're a little bit older when their powers developed and so him as a baby developing so young was something surprising yeah uh yeah me and crystal were talking about this because we're talking about for example the other two kids right can you imagine you have a baby that has the power of invisibility Mm -hmm. like what if it and it can't control it right so it's just like disappears and you cannot find your baby somewhere like it could be sleeping right they crawled somewhere and fell asleep and it's invisible you have no idea where your baby is it could be gone yeah or or uh the other one dash like it was like could could he do everything fast could he like roll over and crawl really fast i don't know it was just questions i had (laughs) yeah i think uh i think they were a lot older by the time their powers developed it could be. What did you think about the Jack Jack versus the raccoon fight? Uh, that was okay. Really? I loved that. I thought that was so funny. I the the moment when the raccoon is like tied up in the chair and then Jack Jack bursts into flames and is like throwing chairs and the raccoon's just panicking. I thought was really that, funny. I I liked uh, I liked that he went after the raccoon because it looked like he was wearing a mask. Yeah. 
So I, I, I like the motivation behind it. Yeah. I, well, it's funny because, like, think about how horrific that would be if your baby got in a fight with a raccoon in real life. A raccoon would oh, just would, tear your baby up. kill it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, just, I don't know, something about it, about the, the vulnerability that should be there and how the raccoon just lost it was uh, enjoyable. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, um, overall, I think yeah, the movie... Sure the movie's fine like it's not there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing uh you know like i know people were disappointed and they they think it wasn't great or worth the wait and all this different stuff but again are people disappointed i haven't heard any bad things about it yeah on facebook and on twitter i've seen a lot of people kind of complaining about it but it's not it's not really for you you know like it's a kid's movie we can't expect movies made for kids to to fulfill everything that we want it to be we can't expect like my cousin was complaining about how it wasn't really worth the weight of it coming out and stuff and the when the first one came out he was like six you know (laughs) and so i was like yeah that makes sense that you loved it then it also makes a ton of sense that you don't love it now like maybe he was older than that, but like even if he was ten or whatever, like there's a big difference in being a kid yeah. and being an adult and having something affect you, then and expecting it to do the same thing now. It's just it's not for you anymore. Like it's okay. It doesn't make it bad. Like if kids love it the same way kids love the first one, then it did exactly what it was meant to. And like I've yeah. I've heard people say that it was a like a cash grab or like only made to make money, which one that's true for all movies. All movies are. Yeah. Right. And two, I feel like they actually tried like they, this doesn't no, feel, no, they did for sure. This doesn't feel like planes. The movie. Did you ever see that? Or, uh, Oh yeah, that was pretty bad. So it was, to be honest, cars two was pretty bad. Yeah. And you know, I felt like, and that one came out so fast after the first one, mm. it felt rushed and yeah like a money grab yeah and i think there was room uh for this story to be unnecessarily unnecessarily political and i don't feel like they did that you know with uh last a girl becoming the main superhero in the family i felt like there was like i expected a lot more like political commentary Feminism. yeah and uh uh-huh. it that's not not what it was like yeah the dad was really bad at being a parent because he wasn't used to doing it and then he got better at it and elastigirl yeah. fit back into her role as a superhero because that's what she was like it wasn't like she's a woman so she's the best superhero and he's a he's a man so he's a terrible dad it's like no they what they do is what they're good at and what they don't do they get better at it with more practice and th- like yeah. that's the that's the message that really should be being put out there like i, I don't know if we talked about it but I think Mulan is one of the better, you know, female characters like that I would want my kids to emulate. There's a a training scene of Mulan and all the guys and they all start out terrible. None of them are good. And as they go and they get practice, she gets better and the other guys get better. It's not about men versus women and who can do it. It's It's about experience and ability, you know, and. That's they have to get down to business <laughs> to defeat the hunt. Exactly. No, yeah, no, that's that's a good point. Um, yeah, they. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That's all I got. <laughs> and there's there's a but yeah. No, I agree. There's even like some moments where she is connecting with the villain, the sister, on being mm-hmm. women, right? And like yeah. she trusts her. Uh, like overly trust her because they're both women. And this was something my wife actually pointed out that she felt like it was a good thing to show like, Oh, just being women doesn't mean that doesn't make you the good guy. Yeah. Like it, it, like it doesn't like they don't, they don't explicitly go into it in the movie, but like, that's kind of a blinder that she had up, Yeah, you know, like her trust of the other girl. Cause they're both women was kind of something that got in her way and allowed her to get tripped up. And so just, you know, you kind of have to dig to get to this point, but like you, it's not, that's, there's more than just that, right? Like that's not the, yeah. that's not what's the most important thing. 
Yeah. Um, but I would, I sure. would say we both agree that we hate women, right? That's fair. Yeah. I, I thought that was the conclusion <laughs> that we were building up yeah. to. Um, one thing that was nagging at me the whole movie mm. was uh, they still let the Underminer get away. He's out there. Yeah. Where's the Underminer? I don't know. Underground, probably. Because they, they made like a, a, a whole thing, like uh, Mr. Incredible, I think, at one point, he was like really upset. He's like, I, I, I let him get away. Like, he got away. Yeah, he's still out there. Like, we got to do something. Yeah. But they do have his gonna be giant n- thing, whatever you call that. His drill. His drill, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. I guess he's probably not anything without the the drill. Yeah, I mean, he can't undermine if he's not uh, if he doesn't have his giant machine to do it. I will say that the the villain in this one, when it's the when she is actually dressed up in her you know uniform, mm. it's. It's a little, it's a little scary, just because there's like the the TV, you know, like a lot of flashing from the TV screens and this and that. Yeah. It's and how she's real quiet. She all sneaks up. It's does she? It was it, it was pretty cool. She never wears the the villain uniform though, does she? I thought that she was well. Because she, she, yeah, so maybe not. She controlled the, the pizza the, delivery guy, right? With the the goggles, and he was who we thought the villain was the whole time. Which I thought was I Frozone was for a minute. A moment. His oh, really? yeah, I thought that Frozone turned into the bad guy at one point, which I thought would have been interesting. But I, uh, oh. Oh. I didn't. Well, okay, maybe we don't see her as it, but the character itself. Yeah, I feel like they could have cut out a lot more of uh, Elastic Girl on her own and like all that stuff, like because there's the middle chunk is mostly her. Right, her story, which is fine, but the right. end when all the superheroes are uh, being controlled by uh, Screen Slaver, um, yeah, that gets wrapped up really quick. Like as soon as they start fighting yeah. back, they're able to take the goggles off pretty easily, and I felt like there was a lot more room to make a more interesting fight. Like the uh, the train sequence was cool and all. But that went on for a really long time. Like I would have, if you could have cut that in half and given that other half to them fighting the other superheroes, I think it would have been way more interesting or even just less time, you know, of them talking and different stuff. But it's hard to say like what is worth cutting out and what's not worth putting back in. But, oh my goodness. The, uh, what is this? my (laughs) wedding ring. I was like, you're, I'm just fidgeting with my wedding ring. Pop rocks. it It keeps slipping off my finger. Oh, um, the, the brick guy, I think his name was just brick. Maybe. Yeah. What, what is his power? Is he just strong? Cause he's just a big old dude. Not the guy who can crush things, right? No, that's not who you're No, not the, not that guy. The actual guy who's like wearing a brick t-shirt. Yeah. And he's like really big. Yeah. I think he's just strong. I think yeah, it's super right strength. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, what I was going to one more thing I was going to say, I like that they, they, they give the the kids powers uh-huh. that like are able to like let them be involved in adult fights, you know. Yeah. Because like any a- anything where it's adults versus kids, it's probably not fair, obviously. But then, like Dash, he's he might not be strong or whatever, but he's so fast that he can like land a good 15 20 punches on somebody yeah. i mean it, it, i don't care how strong you are if you get hit 15 20 times it's like rapid in the face it's gonna it's gonna do some damage and yeah. then he can get out before you can even land a punch like their abilities allow them to be kids and still be involved in an adult fight mm-hmm. which i think is pretty cool yeah well i also like that jack jack made things harder for everyone yeah you know like a lot of times i think in movies they go look for ways to be like things are overly convenient and jack jack seemed like a constant inconvenience where they couldn't progress the plot they couldn't progress their mission because they kept having to go and find him and protect him and make sure he was safe which yeah like gave it more stakes like it kind of got you more and more invested into it yeah but uh yeah anything else about incredibles 2 
Um, no, that's it. So from negative five to five, what are you going to give it? Uh, I think I'm going to give it a four. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to give it a two. What about you? A two. A two? Yeah. Okay. But as a kid's movie, it's like, I don't know, four or five. Like, it, it just depends. Like, for me personally, I, it was like one or two. But for a kid's movie, based on how my kids reacted, it's, it's definitely up there. You know, they loved it. Oh, so. yeah, for sure. I agree. And that. Yeah, I'm going to give it a four. I really liked it. Yeah. Um, we also have uh, coming out in the next couple of days. I did it an episode with uh, Nick from the Epic Film Guys podcast. We talked about Jurassic World and how it's kind of a bad movie. So that should be out uh, either. It's either already out or coming out like the day after this comes out. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was a fun episode. Okay. And right on. <laughs> um, we will be. I also saw that movie. Just so you know. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did you like it? Uh, I well, I liked it more than the first one. Yeah, that's how I felt about it. I I hated the first one so much. I like this one more than I thought. I liked this one more than I actually did. The more I think about it, the less I like it. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it wasn't great. It was probably about thirty minutes too long. Yeah. And uh, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. We, we we could talk about it on another time. All right. But I, I I definitely think it's better than the first yeah. one. All right. Well, that's it for our Incredibles 2 episode. We will be back. Uh, if you're watching the live stream right now, we're about to do our Before I Fall episode. If you're just listening to the podcast. Oh, yeah. That will come out in a few weeks. Um, we try to record every episode live stream on YouTube. So if you want to follow us there, you can try to catch those. And uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter. I seen that pod. Like us on Facebook, and we'll be back soon. Woo woo!